Bitcoin universe. Well, this is the video um, I wanted to tell you guys about uh, my test project. We've been running maybe about uh, two days now. Uh, so let me start from the beginning. I am in a box that we have constructed with a 14 inch port on this end. Power supplies here and a 14 inch port on this end. So, what's going on is we talked to some HVAC engineer friend of mine and we were trying to figure out uh, how to cool the machines at the same time um, not use humid air from outside because it was very humid here in North Carolina uh, and we don't want to damage these uh, high-end computers. So, the thinking uh, was to also not waste the heat. And how can we be very green? As you see in my first video, I have a um, solar mill which is sitting on my back deck, which you know basically generates me free power um, with solar panels and wind turbines. Uh, so I get a percentage of free power. It generates 1,200 watts. Uh, each solar uh, uh, Antminer S7 uses about 1,300 watts. In theory, uh, my solar mill will run one amp miner S7 uh, during the day, practically for free. Um, so that's, that's, that's a very help catch. Uh, it's very helpful when you're trying to get an ROI and return on your investment. I'm hoping you guys can hear me over the miners uh, down here in the box. So what's going on now is. Uh, all of this is connected to my house AC system and my house. We're using my house, which is 1,600 square feet, as a void, an air void, uh, per se, uh, to help uh, circulate air, cool and heat the air. And we're dealing with four Antminer S7s. Uh, I don't know the exact calculation. I don't know how they did it. I can just tell you the engineer told me uh, that four Antminer S7s generate 18,000 BTUs. And you can probably do the math to break it down to one if you would like, or two, or so forth. So in a 16,000 square foot house uh, plus, um, where I'm able to run, uh, so far in the 24 hour period here in North Carolina, uh, it's running, the temperature in the house is about 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, with these things running 24 hours a day with no added heat. So far, I have heated my house in the coldest year of 2016 with four Antminer F7s. It got down to 20 some degrees. It kept the house up to 65 degrees. Um, when it warmed up, they finally warmed the house up to 70. Uh, for two days, I paid no money for heat. Uh, the wasted heat from my Antminer F7s had heated my house. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to, to, about this project. Uh, and how well the results have turned out and I wish I had started making videos and uh, doing it earlier on but it's never too late to catch up and try to explain to you guys uh, how we did this and what I'm doing for this winter uh, so we can all be green and not try to waste as much power as possible at least we're going to get a dual use out of it by heating our homes this winter um, so the way this works guys and uh, if I don't know how much you're familiar with HVAC systems uh, like you have a supply in your house, uh, which are all your registers, where the air blows out of, and then you have a return, which is where your air filters are. Uh, with your air filters, you uh, actually, that's you know where the air is being pulled in from the house. Uh, so, and it creates a suction using the big blower of the AC system. So, I'll show you the AC system a little bit later on, but the way this works is this is a streamlined process. So, I'm going to open the box and step out just a little bit so you can see it. See, it goes straight across, but you can hear the sounds of them change when my static pressure changes. So, uh, what's happening is uh, this is connected to my vent downstairs. I have a two-story house, and this is connected to my return, which has a very high-end air filter on it. And this is how I'm filtering the air coming in to my uh, uh, Antminer S7. Now return is what's happening is if I'm keeping the house at 70 degrees, then all of the air coming in through my 
every turn is 70 degrees. So I am feeding my Ant Miner S7 70 degree cool air, and they're, they're pumping out. We use the thermostat. Fortunately, I don't have one down here with me. Um, it gets, uh, I can't really feel too much heat right there, uh, but they're pumping out about 100, uh, they're probably about 120 degrees right at the end, right about here, and they're pumping out about uh, 100 degrees at the end of the tunnels, uh, the tubes, they cool down. So maybe 110 degrees. So basically I'm pumping in uh, 110 degrees by each one of these. I believe each fan is about 200 CFM, give or take. Uh, so I believe each port is moving 200 CFMs into uh, that 14 inch port. A uh, 14 can move uh, about 800 CFMs. So that matches about right to the CFM load to the, for the four that we're moving. Now I'm going to come out of the box and I'm going to show you the outside of the box. So as you guys can see, I'm in my crawl space. Uh, you could do this possibly in an attic if you want to insulate the box and try to protect it a little bit better uh, from the outside areas. You can always go with a smaller box. Um, but the, relatively, this is the supply duct. This is going around the box to the back. And I walk around and then you can see right here in the corner this is just a duct to my house and this duct here uh, is going to the box this is the uh, return so this duct as you can see the return goes straight over to the left right as, over that plastic box which is a media filter and then I walk around this okay so this connects to the back of the box, the shortest run possible is the best, using a 14 inch, which goes into my AC system right here. Now, all we did in order to do this was build the box and I have a normal AC system. Now granted, this is going to be an expert level setup. Um, I will not lie to you. This took an, ex an HVAC expert who knows how to control the boards, jumper the fans. Uh, you need this fan on continuously um, because they are in a box. They will heat up. It's very dangerous if they do heat up. Um, you need to make sure that these things, that this fan stays on all the time. Uh, and every AC system is going to be different. So you're probably going to have to enlist uh, an AC expert to help you with this project. Um, if you're interested in attempting it. Uh, this right here is my whole house media filter. So this is the airflow. So the air is getting filtered upstairs on the uh, upstairs level, which is going into the miners. The air is coming out of the miners from that corner over there through this tube to here. And it's also getting filtered before it goes into the system. I would open this gate, but there's a coil in the system. This coil has refrigerant in it. And what's helping the house maintain the air and heat up and stuff is this warm air is coming over this coil and the coil is absorbing the heat and helping to maintain uh, a particular temperature. And that's also how it helps to cool the air in one way and also heat the house at the same time depending on what kind of air is coming through. Uh, this is an Amana system uh, installed from Alternative Air here in Durham, North Carolina. They're also the HVAC specialist who helped me set up uh, my server room staging setup. And that name again was Alternative Air. So the way we did this was this was my downstairs uh, supply, or excuse me, my downstairs return. This is my upstairs, uh, excuse me, this is my bypass for my zone damper. So this has nothing to do with it. And my bypass for my zone damper is turned off. So if you have a zone in your system, this makes this a lot more complicated. Again, I'm just kind of giving you the basics so you can understand the concept of how this is working. So um, what this is doing is this is, so let's just say for now all intents of purposes, this is my upstairs return and this is my downstairs uh, return. We don't want to take the upstairs air because the upstairs is generally going to be warmer than downstairs. So if we can get enough airflow 
uh, with just one return, then we're gonna use only the downstairs because it's gonna be a few degrees cooler for sure. So what we did is we took and disconnected the downstairs return, which I'll walk over here to this beam. If you can see, it's a little dark. Let me back up. Um, yeah, you can't really see it over in the corner. Anyways, that's where it goes upstairs. Um, sorry for the zoom, guys. Uh, doing this on my phone, but that's where the return from downstairs in my house uh, comes in. So that used to go over this beam and straight into this connection right here. So instead of doing that, we disconnected that one and we rerouted it to the front of the box. Uh, and then we took this one to the back of the box, which is we want the shortest run. So when we rerouted it, this is the return from upstairs or from downstairs that I was showing you. The upstairs just goes into the system as usual. So that you understand this, so what we did is all we did is we put a chamber or a box in between the downstairs return to your system is all we did. So we're using the volume of the house to cycle the air through to keep the amp miners cool and at the same time utilize the heat to heat the house um, so we don't have to pay for heating this winter. So my amp miner S7 now, my ROI is going to be just that much quicker because I'm not going to have to pay my normal $150, $200 a month that I used to pay uh, to heat my house. Or maybe it wasn't quite that high, excuse me. Probably closer to $100 a month. That was my total bill. So heating is probably half of that. Um, $75 to $100 a month, which now goes towards to counting towards one of my miners. So my rationality or thinking towards this, so granted, this is only my second day into this. Uh, it's going to take a little more thinking, and this is only for the winter so far. Um, but my thinking is it could save me $75 to $100 a month by not having to run um, the heating system. And granted, the fan is running 24 hours a day, but I'm washing that because I was going to run that fan anyways to exhaust my miners because I can't run them upstairs. They're too loud. Uh, there's too much heat, especially for four of them. I tried one of them in a different video in my living room and tried to quiet an Ant Miner S5. There's another video you'll have to watch on that, but it's, uh, you can't watch TV. They're too loud. It doesn't work. So I had to find something else to do. And I'm trying to find a way that every American can have at least one Ant Miner F7 running in their house and producing Bitcoin and not to mention helping to strengthen the blockchain. And just imagine how strong that would be and how many hands that this puts the power into if everybody in America could just have one of these or even a portion or a smaller percentage of us uh, that were able to do so. And, and this is a great way to run it. I mean, even if it's in the winter, uh, if it doesn't work in the summer. So I'm sure everybody is sitting here thinking and wondering, now how about the summertime? How is this gonna work in the summertime? Is this gonna cost an arm and a leg because we're adding these extra 18,000 BTUs to the system uh, to cool? And, and you know, again, I'm personally torn on this. I will update you guys and let you know as time goes on. Uh, and do periodic updates and power updates and so forth. But my thinking is, and the engineers thinking, and they're, what they're trying to convince me on is because it's the house volume is going to be 72 degrees. So if you're already cooling the house and keeping the house at that temperature, it is going to add a little bit to it. Um, but it's not going to be as much as you might think uh, because you're using the return, you're using the volume of air in your house, um, which is, you know, 1,600 plus square feet, and this is working for uh, four Ant Miner S7. So, uh, you know, if you were using, you know, two or one or you know, whatever it might be to do something like this on a smaller scale, bigger scale, whatever it might be, um, I believe that it would work uh, very well. Um, so 
uh, I'll keep, again, I'll keep you guys updated on it, how it actually progresses in the summer, if it winds up being cheaper, more expensive. But it, the thing is, is in the summer, it's humid here in North Carolina too, so I can use outside air. Is that going to reduce the longevity, the longevity of my um, Ant Miner S7s? Because again, I'm in this for the long haul. I expect to be running these things several years uh, in the future. Um, just again this is more of a retirement type concept because we want to get in on this on the ground level and really start to think about how um you know how how we're you know how the system is going to build and the value of these coins just imagine if everybody in america just wanted one coin there's only 21 million coins available that's the price of these things can really go up so this is drastically the ground level of this project and uh, and the more people that get involved, the more people that understand it and use it, it the only stronger it's going to become. So, uh, again, guys, this is my Ant Miner S7, four of them, heating my 1600 square foot house plus. This is the return coming from the downstairs. Uh, where the hot air is going is out this duct right here, which has got suction coming from the return of my heating system. And the upstairs is not connected. So I've got one expansion slot uh, for this video. I've been doing this for about 24 hours. Everything works. We've got as high as 55 degrees today. The house got as high as 72 degrees upstairs and downstairs. Um, hey it's a little warmer uh, than the 70 I usually keep it set at but I can't complain worst case scenario I guess I'll just open a window right um, yeah, so far this project's working uh, you know I, I do want to also stress again this is an advanced project the key is to make sure you have somebody that knows how to work the heating and air system uh, to make sure the fan is going to do what we need it to do uh, for the miners uh, because you, you have to remember the fan in this type of situation in a box is very crucial um, you know obviously they do have the overheat protection if they get up to 80 celsius but i personally would like to keep them much lower than that um, so here you go guys i'm heating my house with bitcoin miners Durham, North Carolina. And the box is a little bit warmer than the crawl space, but that's to be expected. The air coming through is nice and cool. Um, guys, this is the way to do it. All it is is a chamber directing the air through. Um, free heat, free Bitcoin, free money however you want to look at it. It's green, it helps the environment, sort of. Um, it's, you know, I'm gonna burn the power running the machines anyway, so I might as well find a greener, better way of doing so and try to help the environment all at the same time. Again, I believe this summer will be very a crucial test to find out how well this really turns out to work. Um, humidity is my biggest concern. Longevity of the machines, um, so I do believe this is a great test, guys. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if I can try to answer anything to try to help you set this system up. Um, I do have a zone system on the house. I had to basically, we had to, un I didn't do it, but the HVAC guy expect, uh, expert did it. We unwire the downstairs zone um, damper. So it's always on. It's always pulling from downstairs. Um, you know, the, right now we're also playing with the thermostats uh, we've run a few test scenarios what might happen um, if we turn the heat on or if we actually instead of just having the system off and just running the fan all the time which is the mode it's in right now and it seems to be heating well let's say it gets really cold like it did the first night and you're going to need some supplemental heat uh, for this your supplemental heat uh, would probably come from uh, your normal heat pump or your heater system, however, whatever system would normally, would, you know, however you would normally heat your house. 
all you would do is you need to set your thermostat uh, so that when it, it would just come on like normal. It's just your board on your machine has to be programmed so that the fan doesn't turn itself off. There's all kinds of different funny settings that manufacturers will make and do um, if for power savings, for different reasons, for energy um, consumption. It's I don't fully understand it, but bottom line is you have to make sure uh, before you're running the miners that this fan under all circumstances if you're calling this calling heat emergency heat kicks on there's a lot of scenarios you really need to test it and run it and make sure that the fan doesn't go into any uh, standby mode uh, go to 50 percent and then ramp up you might have a variable speed motor and it might only run at 50 percent most of the time and you might have to program the board so it goes to 100 uh, we had to do that as well um, you may only be running two miners, so you may not need to run it at 100%. Um, you could probably run it at 50%, conserve power as well. So this is a very good way of reducing your power consumption overall uh, with your amp miners. One would be solar panels and the wind turbines that you saw, the, well, maybe you saw in the first video, but I did in the very first video on my back deck. Um, there will be more videos and I'll update you guys on those things. If you have questions about them, I'll try to answer them, help you. Uh, this piece of metal here uh, was one of my first attempts. Uh, this attached to the wall to a, um, a port and each miner was directed into each bay here. Unfortunately, the throw on the miners are very strong. What I mean by that is the air coming out the back of those it wants to be pushed it's pushing very hard uh, so there can be a lot of rebound and the rebound heated up the box so uh, if you're interested in playing and dabbling with this adventure you will find that you can't just sit the miners in a chamber they get too hot the hot air really needs to be directed out uh, with as I showed you in the box earlier um, I'll go back up here and we'll go back into the box um, here so when you're directing this air you need to direct it using uh i preferably use dryer ducts because they can handle higher heat and they're six inch dryer ducts they're not attached they're just the miners are just lightly sit on them and the top part is open so the extra air can get pushed out and the miners are just pushing the air in these ducts um, and, and they're running they're running pretty cool channeling the air in. Now, as you can tell, I just have them stuck into that hole. I have a new project from one of my old projects, which is this box here. I want to take this box and mount it on the wall over here um, and then plug the six inch ports into that wooden box and I'll cut a hole here to suck some of the extra hot air out because um, I need the air to cross uh, over the miners but I needed to also suck some of the hot air out of the box. Hot air likes to rise so I'll um, you know put a hole here at the top and that's a test I'll probably run this weekend and try to see how that works. Uh, the miners are running really cool right now they're about 51 Celsius to 55 Celsius um, one of them, unfortunately, this one's running a little hot. I think it's because of the bend in the pipe where the other two are straighter. This one seems to be running really good. Um, but still, they're only 55 Celsius, which is a little higher than what I was hoping for. Uh, they do seem to fluctuate with the inside temperatures. Um, when the house was 65 degrees, they were very low, 49 Celsius. Uh, around 70 degrees, the house, uh, which is probably going to be much closer to normal. Uh, they're running about 51 to 55, depending on, uh, I believe, on the ducting. And I need to work on the ducting just a little bit to fine tune it. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, anything under 60 is good. Um, I prefer long term, uh, low 50s, and really. Um, for the miners, but especially considering I'm heating my house, this box is pretty cool. Um, I can feel the cold air crossing them. I mean, the miners are really cold. The miners are really cold to touch. There's no 
heat issues. Even when I put my, I don't feel any warm air blowing out the back of these. They're getting the warm air is just getting sucked right up out of the whole system, uh, straight out of this floor into that floor. It's really efficient. It seems to be working great. Uh, yeah. So right now I'm testing no heat. I'm not adding any heat into my house at all. Uh, that's the big test. There's no heat being added. I've been done this for about two days and it's, uh, it's going great. So guys, I will update you on my heating house with my bit mining. Ant Miner S7s, four of them. I'm excited. This is going to help me with my ROI, my return on my investment so much quicker. Uh, between the solar mills on the back deck, um, which even forget those. If I'm just heating my house for three months this winter, that's free power for one Ant Miner S7. Uh, that's awesome. You know, that, that just helps me so much more. So, guys, I'd really look into it. I'd check it out. Uh, in some other videos, I explained why this duct here is disconnected uh, and why this one is here. This was my fresh air intake. Um, and you can check me out. Uh, make sure to also subscribe, follow the channel, and, you know, ask any questions you have. This is to be educational, guys. Let's, let's learn together. Uh, you know, I, I'm not again what much of a youtuber, but this was so cool and so What saw such an awesome idea and revolutionary? I wanted to share it with you guys. So, you know, go YouTube universe and uh, go YouTube Bitcoin universe and keep Bitcoin mining guys. See ya. Bye